I mean, it's real. It's so, it's so bizarre that when you realize what's happening, I'm going to try and tell it. See if I can get this straight. You know, they come up. They have this. Like this guy, John Goffman, Berkeley, has this device that can fractionate lipoproteins. Basically, it can take the lipoproteins, which are the carriers of the, of the cholesterol from your blood, and say there's you got so much LDL, so much VLDL, very low density, so much IDL. And look, VLDL seems to be as much of a risk factor, if not more. If you believe his equations, it's a greater risk of heart disease than LDL. And VLDL carries the triglycerides. So then another group of scientists, Pete Ahrens and some other people, Margaret, whose name I'm going to forget at the moment, who really did great work, and I shouldn't forget her name, and it's embarrassing. Margaret. Margaret got marginalized. She was at Yale, and she took a job at West Virginia, and it was like, boof, West Virginia, who cares? You know, her husband got a job there. We don't care what you have to say. Anyway, they pushed, they said, look, triglycerides are a greater risk factor. It's cholesterol, all the studies show it. So in 67, this guy Donald Fredrickson and Robert Levy and a guy named Lees, they're at NIH, and they put this five-part series in the New England Journal of Medicine on, it's called lipoprotein disorders, basically, and they, five, they classify them as five different lipoprotein disorders, and some of them are low LDL, and some of them are low VLDL, or high VLDL, or high triglycerides. And they want to know what, how these things, the portion in the population at large, because they've just been studying patients who refer to them at NIH. So Fredrickson and Levy are big deals at NIH. Back then it was, it was the National Heart Institute instead of the NHLBI. So they get funding to give money to Framingham and five other big population studies to see how much LDL you know, how these sort of lipoprotein disorders appear in the population. So for the first time ever, these studies are going to measure LDL and VLDL, cholesterol, um, and total cholesterol, okay? Now, they've never, nobody's ever measured VLDL or triglycerides in large populations. It's never been done. So now, for the first time ever, these big studies like Framingham have the money to do it. And Lee, uh, Fredrickson, Levy, and Lee's also give them a they, they come up with a technology that makes it relatively inexpensive to measure these things. You don't need this huge equipment that Goffman had at Berkeley. Um, so they go out to do this study, and the problem is you can't measure LDL directly. I don't know the details why, but it can't be done. What you have to do is measure total cholesterol, triglycerides, and HDL, and you do this equation and you calculate LDL. So they have to measure HDL also. Now, since 1950 or 51, I forget which, people have been saying HDL is the single most important risk factor for heart disease, and it's been ignored because if HDL is high, that means it's good for you. But Ansel, it's part of total cholesterol, and Ansel Keys has been saying that total cholesterol is bad for you, and that has to be low. And how do you make sense of part of total cholesterol being good when total cholesterol is bad? And this is very confusing. So HDL has been ignored. So now they have to measure HDL in order come up with the number for LDL, and the head of the guy who does the biostatistics for Framingham and NIH and all these studies decides he's got the HDL data. This is now mid-70s. Let's look at it. So he looks to see what kind of risk factor HDL is, and lo and behold, HDL is four times a better predictor of heart disease than LDL. Total cholesterol, he finds out, is meaningless. Total cholesterol doesn't predict heart disease. <laughs> Okay, this is what's being measured. It does meaningless. LDL is a quote marginal predictor. This is the phrase they use. And HDL, four times better, four times more accurate at predicting heart disease. If HDL is low, that's a powerful mean indicator that you're going to get heart disease. And on top of it, for like women, HDL is the only number that matters. Okay, so in 1976, they published these articles, two articles in particular, one from Framingham alone and one from Framingham and the other five groups together. Two different types of study. Both of them say the same thing. Total cholesterol is meaningless. LDL is a marginal predictor of heart disease risk. HDL is the single best predictor. And triglycerides are also a good predictor. So now the problem is you have a half billion dollars of studies dedicated to lowering total cholesterol. 
the LRC Lipid Research Clinics trial and the Mr. Fit trial are both aimed at elevating, lowering total cholesterol, okay? So what they say, and you see this in the papers, they say, well, okay, total cholesterol is meaningless, but LDL makes up the biggest part of total cholesterol, and we know that LDL is a marginal predictor. So we're going to play up how good LDL is, and as you watch the papers, they, 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 the adjectives used to describe it as a risk factor get more and more sort of... Uh, you know, zealous as the time goes, it goes from being marginal to sort of robust without the data ever changing. And we're going to say everything we had said about total cholesterol, all the studies from the 1950s and 1960s, the famous seven country studies, that all measured total cholesterol. So they say everything that we say about total cholesterol is now going to apply to LDL cholesterol. And the Mr. Fit study and the Lipid Research Clinic study, we're going to say are aimed at lowering LDL cholesterol. So that's what we're trying to do because LDL is a predictor. Now the problem is that in the clinic where doctors all around the world are measuring total cholesterol, they're measuring something that's meaningless. But you can't measure LDL cholesterol. They don't have a test for it. You've got to measure all these other things and calculate LDL cholesterol, which is too difficult to do. Okay, and it's way it's not the kind of thing that they can tell doctors to do because they're going to have all kinds of problems with mistakes and errors and all these things that have to be worked out that they can't do. Meanwhile, they have the doctors measuring total cholesterol. They're doing it all over the world. So they say in the clinic, and you read this in the articles. I'm not making this up. In the clinic, total cholesterol is a good enough substitute for LDL cholesterol that people can keep measuring total cholesterol and use that as their guide. So the study says that total cholesterol is meaningless. In the scientific discussion, we're going to replace LDL cholesterol, total cholesterol with LDL cholesterol because that's a marginal predictor. And then in the clinic, we're going to re-replace LDL cholesterol with total cholesterol going back to the meaningless predictor on the basis that it's a close enough substitute for LDL that it'll suffice. So within three years, they can say that doctors should continue measuring total cholesterol even though they now know that total cholesterol is meaningless. Meanwhile, HDL and triglycerides just still continue to get left out totally because what do you do about that? And it's four times the predictor. And it's and four times the predictor. If you, yeah. if you measure total cholesterol, you have to have HDL somewhere in that equation when yeah. you do it. Yeah. So they have that predictor, but they just said. You can't. What are you going to And the problem, the interesting thing is, you know, then 